and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube for some Orzov value. We're going to go ahead and, and play this deck again because I really like Charming Prince. I really like creatures with ETB effects and flickering them with Charming Prince. And Soren Vengeful Bloodlord is a really fun card to play, bringing stuff back um, from the graveyard. This is just a fun deck to play, so let's, let's bring it back. Um, one card that we didn't play in this deck before that I just really like in a standard right now that I think is just a really strong card in standard that, that not many people are playing at all is Cavalier of Dawn. It's a difficult Cavalier to cast. There's not many people playing many white cards in general. But I think this card's pretty awesome because, you know, so it's ETB, destroy one non-land permanent, and then its controller makes a 3-3 three, three, uh, golem artifact creature token. The other part doesn't really matter, uh, especially in this deck. But so basically you get to, you know, you get, it's like a, it's it's basically like Assassin's Trophy, if you think of it like that. But instead of them getting a land, they get a 3-3. Three, three. And the value of either player getting 3-3s three, is kind of at an all-time low right now with Oko turning everything into 3-3s, three, Nissa making 3-3 three, three lands. There's just a lot of 3-3s three, just kind of around anyway. And so an extra 3-3 three, three isn't, um, isn't super valuable. And, and Cavalier of Dawn can turn Oko, which we all know that Oko is a really difficult thing to deal with because it has so much loyalty. And same with like Nyssa, like even Hydroid Crisis, like any of those things, Hydroid Crisis, Nyssa, Oko, you get to destroy them and just give them a 3-3 three, three instead. And it's a lot easier to deal with a 3-3 three, three instead of those permanents. And so that's why I want these Cavalier Dawns, you know, like destroy Oko, destroy Nyssa, destroy Krasis, just give them a 3-3 three, three instead. Um, yeah, so if, so basically Cavalier of Dawn was Oko before Oko was cool. You know, like this was already in standard making 3-3s. Three, um, but then, of course, there is there is poetic justice there turning um, turning Oko into a 3-3. Three, three. That's definitely some poetic justice. The card works perfectly with Charming Prince, also being able to flicker it and make you know destroy another creature there. Um, the Bant mid range that we're going to be playing in a little bit after Rakdos, um, that's one where I really build around Cavalier of Dawn, and um, I have four Cavalier of Dawns in the Bant mid range deck. I think it's just a really good card. So we got more of them in here. Uh, besides that, our our deck also likes to a attack our opponent's hand. We got the Burglar Rats, the Fen Lurkers, the Basilica Bell Haunts. You know, so we're making them discard a lot of cards. Um, you know, Hydroid Crisis decks really want a lot of, you know, they want as many resources as possible. Um, you know, like with if you're playing Hydroid Crisis, you would, you would rather start with 10 cards in hand and your opponent start with 10 cards in hand. You're happy with that because you just want a lot of resources because you can just want a lot of like lands in play and then you play a huge Crisis and you get more. That's what you want. But if you have it, so like, if we have like two of these, it's like we start with five cards in hand, and then they start with five cards in hand because they have to discard two. Like that's that makes like a small crisis, and it's, you know, it makes hydro crisis a lot worse if if you just reduce the resources. And so that's what our deck does with these burglar rats, fen lurkers, flickering them with the charming prince, make them discard more. Um, Bell haunt also, um, you know, chump blocking with with these things, bringing them back with Soren, making them discard. That's that's the the goal of the deck: reduce the resources of the opponent there. Okay, um, I think that's 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 a good intro to the deck. We're gonna go ahead and play over and ranked. The it's just a it's a brand new month now. The rankings just reset like an hour ago, um, so we just went down from mythic down to platinum tier four, and we'll go ahead and play some matches in ranked and get on back up there. So here we go, Orzov value. <clears throat> My Halloween costume should just be wearing a t-shirt suit. Oh, a t-shirt suit. <laughs> so like the t-shirt the that like is, a, is just a t-shirt with a tie. That'd be pretty good.
What rank did we end the season at? I, I was like number 257 with like 30 minutes left to go the last I checked. So somewhere around there. Hey, what's up, Matu? Happy Halloween. All right. Ain't no wolves for the wicked. <clears throat> um, the song, this is Sons and Daughters by the Decemberists. I'll type that out for you. There you go. I don't know why it didn't work. Burglar rats. I don't think I want a burglar rat here. Oops. I probably should have attacked first. My charming prince is going to come back at their end step. This all this does is just give me um gives me the ability to wait until the end of their turn to decide what I want to scry or what I want to do with my Charming Prince activation. <clears throat> Figure they're going to be doing that. Yes, I want Cavalier of Night. Thank you. Um, I don't think I want to do that this time, though. Because I want to have the two... I want to make sure that we have two blockers in case they have, like, another Wicked Wolf for one. I don't want to just have the one blocker. All right, so that's pretty good. We got four lands and a Burglar Rat down at the bottom. So that's pretty good. No, the the badge for the next qualifier doesn't it takes a little while for you to get those. It takes a couple of days for it to just all verify and everything. You don't just get it immediately. You should leave. <laughs> as long as we win, nothing else matters. Wow. They're willing just to sacrifice a land and get rid of their Paradise Druid. Huh. I hope they don't have removal for Cavalier of Dawn. That would be bad for me. Then they get to kill Soren. Definitely consider just cashing in Soren and Charming Princing. Um, I'm not sure how many hours we put into Reach Mythic. I I stream every day. Like this is what I do every day. But I don't I don't play ranked every day. Um. So I don't know, honestly. Uh. 
Darn. Should have just grabbed the Charming Prince back. Because having the Charming Prince is pretty in play is pretty valuable with this Cavalier of Knights also. Should have just cashed in the Soren. I, wish you all I went the greedy line, hoping they did not have removal. Yeah, it is cool. That is a really cool golem mark too. The one decision to not get back Charming Prince has been pretty big. Kind of greedy me not not killing Wicked Wolf right now. I'll shear the wool from your eyes and spin you clarity. Your new look is enchanting. There's a delay. Like how how long is this delay? I don't actually with. In this, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to fix any delay, actually, in this new Streamlabs that I'm using. So I, I don't know anything to, what to do about a delay. Okay, it's hardly noticeable. Cool. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, if we draw a Soren, we get to get back Charming Prince. You know, there's four Sorens in the deck, of course, right? There, there better be four Sorens in here, right? Yeah, there's four Sorens. So yeah, like a Soren would get back Charming Prince, which, which would flicker the Cavalier of Night. We could also just draw a Charming Prince to flicker Cavalier of Night. We know we got a bunch of lands down at the bottom. That's why we haven't we haven't drawn lands the last few draw steps. So they just attack out, I'm taking lethal. This game's tough. The the decision with the Soren, that Cavalier of Dawn Soren turn was the turn I really Because because they had the removal for the Cavalier of Dawn, it it, it went terribly for me. I, I did the wrong decision because of that. No, Cavalier does not get the trigger if it dies because it's an elk. All right, so grasp. So I think we kind of turn into just like Orzov control, honestly. I think that's the sideboard plan, turn into Orzov control.
I don't know. I really like Burglar Rat Fenlurker. I don't know. This plan makes Soren a lot worse. This makes Cavalier of Night a lot worse. We'll see. I I may not I may not may not like my plan here. I haven't really done this plan before here. What's the plan with Cavalier of Dawn? <laughs> uh, it's to kill the Planeswalkers. What's the cheap black planeswalker removal that asks for it to sacrifice a creature? That's Spark Harvest. I like waiting on Scrylands until we need to scry for something. I'm I'm playing Bell Haunt next turn, I don't so I don't need to scry for something in particular. I would have just kept that Bell Haunt on top anyway. Yeah, Dispark is very good against the wolf. I probably should have brought in the Dispark for the wolf. I have a lot of other removal for Nissa and Vraska now. Between the Grasps, Murderous Riders, Cavalier of Dawns, but Exile for Wolf. Dispark can help with that. Yep. Yeah, three fours are definitely a great place to be in a in a three three world. <laughs> awesome, Matthew. Yeah, is there a way to utilize the death trigger on Cavalier of Dawn? Um for this kind of deck, like Othakaya would be like the, the obvious one to utilize there. You can you can kill something with Othakaya, then you, you can even destroy your own Othakaya and get a three you know, have your get your own three three. So Othakaya is the the obvious one. I will invert the world to watch kings grovel and worms rule. <laughs> Surely you see the humor here. So I want to keep Oko around. They got a chump lock. They are just going to go double charming prince. You are fouler than a fiend. Make them discard two cards. <laughs> yep, yeah, Starfield and Nick's returning history is really nice. 
Midnight Clock would be good in a deck like your Azorius Control where you sit behind counters anyway. All right, cool. Probably not. Like, Midnight Clock's okay, but I, I just don't think it's... Like, I think I'd rather have, like, a counter spell in my hand than, like, the, the Midnight Clock, for example. If you if you have other counter spells and you're hitting your land drops and then you also still have Midnight Clock, then it's like, yeah, that then it'd be good, but... Yeah, so maybe we get rid of Cavalier of Night. Um, I mean, I, I like so I like this discard plan even more on the draw also because you know, like they're they're a card behind on the draw. I think we're gonna take out the Legion's Ends, get back to these things. Like, sorry, I'm on the draw. Sorry, they're on the play. When they're on the play and I'm on the draw, they have less, you know, they have like that one less card. I like Citadel. Sure, it can get turned into a 3-3. But that's not until their turn. Can play a whole lot of stuff. Alright, again, we're starting with Scoured Barons. We'll have Rat on 2, Flicker It on 3. Um... I could go like Temple of Skrylance to look for Oko removal immediately. Okay, Oko removal found. So I think I think their plan is to make some more food with the goose. See, they're already down to four cards. So I guess, so they mulled to six, it looks like. Yes, yeah, so they were on a mulligan to six, and now they're basically on a mulligan to five. That hurts. Um, I'm going to need more land. But I don't really want to tap land, because I want to be able to go Soren into Oketra, into Liliana, you know, like that kind of stuff. But putting a land down to the bottom means that we could just draw expensive spells, and then I get, you know, really punished for putting this land down to the bottom. I'm going to put it down to the bottom. We have, we have Charming Prince that can scry and stuff, too.
So they don't have any other lands. Plays kind of risky against. It sets me up really well, just like for the continue, for continuing on. But it's risky if they do have Oko. So I don't have a good answer to Oko right now. But yeah, it gets the Wicked Wolf out of here, and it also keeps my life total high. Makes them not be able to pressure Soren very much. Why do they have to have the card? <laughs> There's like only one card that could save them from here. Uh. Obviously, they just have it. Gaze into my face and put on your trash. All right, well, playing Oketra. <laughs> Pathetic. Is it nearly as valuable now? Come on. So I was going to be able to minus, get back the rat, and then fi flicker the rat and make them discard two of these three. That was like the only card. What a turn. <laughs> really wasn't anything else in their deck that I was scared of at all. Besides that one card. Yeah, I think just playing Oketra just uses my mana the best here. It does force them to tick to plus one on Oketra and not plus two. If I draw a, a three mana or less creature I can flicker Oak Ketra and cast the other one but the problem with that is uh, it doesn't return until end step so I, I can't really do both loyalty is fickle and that's awesome that is awesome that was like best possible scenario we got Oketra out of here Sorry, we got Oko out here. Give me that back. What are you doing? Taking my Oketra. Think you can do that? Veil of Summer? You realize Charming Prince is white, right? Wait, do they get to make this decision? I guess they get to make that decision to put it... They put it in exile? That's the wrong decision. I want to be able to cast Charming Prince and get the 4-4 four four with Oke like with I want to be able to cast it with Oketra on the battlefield. All right, Dan, the re-rank process starts. 
Oh, I didn't put an R by this, show that we're playing it in ranked. There we go. Um, Arena. Arena. Hmm. All right. Force exit with Alt F4. Reset. Main decking Vela Summer makes mono black decks cry like the Carnarium. Okay. One and O. Oh. All right, here we go. We're back. Yeah, it's true. Oketra's stat line does match up very bad against Oko's minus five, but that's why we got Charming Prince. Help save Oketra. Yeah, Ember Cleave is is good. That that Rakdos deck is really trying to play like a a longer game with the frenzies and everything. And Ember Cleave has great synergy with um with Knight of the Ebon Legion too. You said we you said Butcher and Rankle it does have both of those as well. I could play it over I think I have a Chandra in the main deck, if I remember correctly. And I could play Could play Veil of Summer instead there. Or sorry, not <laughs> oh, just thinking of Veil of Summer. Sorry, I could play Ember Cleave instead there. Ember Cleave doesn't Um I don't know, it's not it's not a great card to have on top with Frenzy if you don't have creatures to be able to attack with. You know, it could just be you know, with its six mana. They discard Shepherd of the Flock. That card's amazing. All right. Well, Edgewall Innkeeper. If I don't have removal for Innkeeper, I'm going to die. Legion's End. Darn. Yeah, I like one Amara in that deck, I think. I, if I were them, I'd be discarding the Amara, not the Shepherd of the Flock. This card is awesome in that deck with, you know, rebouncing Giant Killer, replaying Giant Killer, playing it. That card, like, when you have Innkeeper in play and everything, it, Amara should be discarded. Not that. <clears throat> okay. Need to draw a white mana source so Cavalier of Dawn can kill Innkeeper. You taste my blade. The weak feed the strong.
I just went and fed Hawkeye before this league. I should have grabbed a new water. I'm out of... Out of water. Oketra's a little expensive for a green-white adventure, but... It's such a powerful card. It's better whenever you... Like, for that kind of deck, it's better when you have, like, mana acceleration for it. I want my opponent to attack. It's not really them attacking. Yeah, we'll see if they have more 1-1s. One Hopefully not. Thanks, Kelly. Yeah, I got my Halloween tie going. Got my Halloween tie. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, uh, if you want to see, I played two different Esper decks yesterday. If you want to see them, check out the YouTube channel there. We did better with the second version. <laughs> Time for a it's going to be a tough matchup for me, honestly. Don't get to cast Cavalier of Dawn, unfortunately. Because it should be March of the Multitudes, which will just more than likely kill me. I mean, I guess sideboard, we're going to have Kaya's Rats. Those are going to be critical. Mm -hmm. I mean, might as well. Things over. No, no, this is a 2 2 creature. A 1-1 one, one with a plus one plus one counter on it is a 2-2 two, two creature. Okay, well that's... They had the combo. So Legion's End, Noxious Grasp. Extra Kaya's Rats. Maybe not Command the Dread Horde, maybe Citadel instead. I don't know, Duress is not bad. I mean, just like I guess I just cut all those things. I think so many of my other cards are worse though.
Okay. Yeah, they cast a lot of spells, but a lot of those spells are creatures with the adventure things. I don't love this hand. Being the two five drops immediately in the opener. But we got Temple and then Charming Prince to help set up our draws. I would really like one Legion's End. I'm going to keep that land, though. <clears throat> as far as I know, the sideboard goes away at like 10 seconds or so, like, like always. I'm not sure if that's accurate, though. Yeah, I know, I know we need to have removal for innkeepers. I just brought in all my Legion's End and Noxious Grasps. So yeah, I, I, t I did take out Riders, but I have Legion's Ends and Noxious Grasps instead. Rider could be better than Noxious Grasp, I guess. Maybe, because you get the 2-3. Yeah, my opponent's all aggro. Aggro Shepherd. For sure. So Soren's gonna die to the fairy guide mother. But we get the last card out of their hands, so this is all they got. Shadows fall. Thanks for that to resub. I appreciate that. And our eighth sub of the day. I'm doing really good. Doing really good. Hope your Halloween's going well. What? What? They just want to discard their 2-2 flyer. Okay. Oh, Ketra's in this deck because it's a good, strong card. We have cheap creatures. We need we need ways to like win battlefield stalls like this, and oh, Ketra does that. You play Oketra, then you start playing other creatures, you make 4-4s. Four it's just a really strong card. If we draw a land here, I'm playing Oketra first, of course. Tilt. Not that land. Um, I don't think we need to trade 
them do th take three, us take two. Yeah, what do you, what what synergy do you want with Oketra? He said no synergy. Like we're playing creatures, and we make four fours. Like what? What synergy do you expect with God Eternal Oketra? Like that's that's what the card does. And you realize, yeah, we this is we're playing a Charming Prince deck. So yes, it can get turned into an elk, but we can we get to flicker it with Charming Prince. Like, is there, is there some other synergy that you expect than besides you, we're playing cheap creatures and you can play cheap creatures and make 4-4s four out of them? Like, the 4-4s four that we make, we get to sacrifice with Cavalier of Night. That's that's some good synergy. All right, like, we can play Cavalier of Night, we make a 4-4, four four, we can sack it to trigger. Yeah, this is an ETB deck. Yeah, that's that's like the whole value part. Like that's it's the value part is creatures with ETB triggers. So yeah, that, that's that's what this deck is. And Oketra Oketra rewards you for playing cheap creatures. And that's what our deck that's what our deck does is play cheap creatures. All right, so I'm going to play Murderous Rider instead of... I'm going to take out one Grass, but I'm going to take out these Cavalier of Knights. I think. They look kind of expensive. Maybe play one Cavalier Knight still and go two Rider. Okay. Hey, Sinkrise getting the sub. Thank you so much there, Boot. <clears throat> um, question, question was thoughts of switching a Yara to the fourth Midnight Reaper. It's possible. I've won games with the deck before because of a Yara and like the, the ping damage, like when we couldn't really get through. Because, um, you know, each, each time like we make you know, like, like a battlefield stall, you know, like we make, we make a zombie, we get to ping them. Also, I've been, I've been pretty happy with the Ayara, but it's a, di it is a difficult card to cast. It's not something that we cast on turn three too often. And speaking of that, I'm, I am going to put it back here with it being a little difficult to cast here. Yeah, our opponent last game, game three, it, they did the minus five for with Oko because this thing only has three power, so they stole Oketra with the minus five, but then we just played Charming Prince and got it back because Charming Prince is just creatures you own. It, it doesn't need to be creatures you control. So Charming Prince is pretty good against the Agent of Treacheries and Mass Manipulations and Oko stealing your stuff. You get it back. I think they only have one Amara. So I think Legion's End on Amara is a little bit wasted because I think that there's only one Amara. Now, not using Legion's End on Amara does make L Venerated Luxodon a lot better if they have Luxodon right now. So I went with the Charming Prince just to block it. 
uh, thanks, Casey. Yep, have a good have a good Halloween. Um. All right, so we're obviously Legion's ending something. Maybe we just do the Amara. They only have two cards in hand, so it's not likely that we hit something anyway. All right, I guess we'll just go with the Amara. Gross. Yep, it can be on your... Yep, because it's... Yeah, when it says you own, yep. All the cards in your deck are cards you own. All the cards in your opponent's deck are the cards they own. You control means it's on your side of the battlefield if you control it. But own is just your cards that are originally in your deck. So that's that's what the word own means. So any card that's in your deck, even if it's on your opponent's side, you get to do that ability. <laughs> Typical Mich Michigan Halloween, winter girl in rain boots. Well, good luck there, Sothian. Hope you have a wonderful night. We're going to have to... Later on, we're going to have to have Hawkeye try on his wizard hat. I got this hat for Hawkeye. I don't, I don't know if he'll wear it, but we'll, we're going to try it. It has like little ear holes and stuff. He's not one to really like sit there and and let me put something on his head. That's that's definitely not Hawkeye at all. I, I'll be very surprised if I actually am successful. Uh, gross. The beast. It's five. Hey, that's pretty good. Just gonna get rid of all these things. In case they draw, you know, Venerate Luxon or something. Let's us start to race. <laughs> yeah, you learned what owner means when you activate Nickel Bolas the Ravager. Yep. That's, yeah, you don't want to steal Nickel Bolas the Ravager and then activate it, that's for sure. I guess they have another, they just drew another March of the Multitudes, I guess. That's unfortunate for me. It's, it's only three creatures, though. That's not so bad. Magnifacto, hello. You know you can draw a land opponent. You can draw a land. If I not, I've just drawn a third March of the Multitudes. They must have drawn Venerated Luxodon, and they don't know what to do with exactly with Luxodon. Okay, no, or that. You know, something that, some card that does something, and they weren't sure what to do with it. That would qualify as a card that does something. Hmm. 
If you don't attack next turn, okay, never mind. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I I don't understand how Oketra not having reach got got past the flavor police. Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure about that either. I'm blocking one of the lifelink things to keep them from gaining a life. be attacking. Midnight Reaper is a good draw. All that free power with Oketra. GG's. Yeah, it's it's raining pretty hard outside. I can hear it raining pretty hard. It's been raining often on the last couple of days. That's really too bad for people wanting to go out trick or treating. Yeah, it's storming. <laughs> White has been doomed since Rebel cards were printed. It's been pouring in Toronto since yesterday. Do y'all in Canada do Halloween there, Zerf? Do y'all do trick-or-treating and everything up there? I think if I was on the draw, I'd, I'd maybe mulligan this. Not have anything turn one, turn two. But, I mean, I do have the temple. They can hopefully help me find a two drop. This hands are up because I, I not only need a two drop, but then I also need like two lands. Okay, cool. Y'all do that in Canada also. Awesome. Um, Georgia weather started 70 this morning. Now it's heading to the 30s tonight. All right, so there's the two drop. Um, no, I didn't trick or treat today. Of course, I've been streaming all day. We've been on for a little over five and a half hours now. Stream until midnight tonight. Do I want to murderous rider this thing? I don't think so. Three AM is the witching hour? Never heard that. The witching hour, the witch's hat. I should probably block with the burglar rat also. So maybe they kill the rat instead. Oh my gosh, that thing came into play tapped. Oh, I did not pay that close attention to that at all. So my plan was just to play Soren and bring back Reaper. All right, new plan. New plan. Um, we could just kill the beast with Ryder. Or Charming Prince the rat. Ugh. 
Uh, new plan. Yep, murder the 5-5. Five five. Alright, so Beast plus Guide Mother is going to do a lot of damage, but we have to get Innkeeper out of here. If I had six mana here, I would have played a Yara and then held up Murderous Rider. Because they like... Uh, I guess I'd probably still need to just Murderous Rider the Innkeeper. Really wish we had six mana. The ringing of my sword is your death knell. I demand servitude. Nice. Still have to like kind of protect from a top deck guide mother. So I was thinking of like playing at Yara to make it so we were at seven, so an another guide mother wouldn't kill me. Oh, come on, March. Please don't have March. Oh, my God. Come on. Ugh. Why? Hmm. Well... What a mess I've made. <laughs> Completely out of season. It's October right now and they're still playing March. <laughs> yep, need more life linkers.
I feel nuts. I really hope not another March or Luxodon. Please don't don't just keep drawing gas. Yay. That's pretty good. Something more. Um, vampirism is a useful trait. I was, you know, kind of thinking about like minusing the Soren, but. I if I minus the Soren, it dies to the Guide Mother right away. No, I, I think that was correct to play the Flower there. Show only had four lands. I think that's correct to play the Flower, get a second White Source in there also, which is important. And you don't really want to draw a land too much. Kind of risky. I guess I can't really do that much damage. I guess I can't do that much damage. Unfortunate. The weak feed the straw. Could have got rid of the sword and got back cap the the whatever it's called. Oh, please not be March. Uh, please don't be March. Play the rat arena. March is... Definitely, it's definitely March.
Come on, deck. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Can you only sacrifice black creatures? Oh. Arena's being really laggy. Yeah, I could sack Cavalier of Night during their draw step and, and make them and get a rat back. Make them discard their draw. Yeah, it doesn't work too well against March of the Multitudes, but against sorcery speed things. That's that's definitely an option. Two, four, six, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Yay, Oketra. Oh, 
please don't have March again. And Arena, please work. That's awesome, Rivapa. Yeah, let me know how it turns out with the, the level one thing. It is 3rd March. So I have 21 blockers. All right, I think we should be good to go there. Let's see, we got to do seven damage. Yeah, that should be seven damage, right? matter. Well, maybe it's not going to be s 7 damage. have in here. So have threes or right, whatever, just do a damage. <laughs> what a mess I've made. One short. Yeah, the original list for this deck had Oketra in it, yeah. Oh that's true, yeah these two these two are flyers. I could have dealt that one point of, that one extra point of damage with the flyer there. All right, so we just played against this, so I wanted Legion's End to get a couple of Grasp in here. Get these things. It's raining hard outside. That's probably not helping my internet too much. Let's 
It's probably not helping too much. I don't know, the Riders is just lifelinkers is really nice, but having that removal for innkeeper right away is really important. Um, but yeah, we saw the value of a Yara there for sure. I don't know what's cut. Man, it is raining so hard. Can y'all hear that? Can y'all hear this? I'll be surprised if y'all can't hear this. Yeah, you can hear it. Okay. 22 minutes over there, 14 minutes over here. So they're going to have to play faster. That's the best card against me right now, for sure. We need to draw it. Legion's End. I could just go with the uh, um, Charming Prince Scry. Two to look for Legion's End. Yeah, this, this innkeeper is just going to dominate. Another Luxodon. That's really good. So if I play Oketra, I die. Yep, just very good hand, GG's. Um, double giant killer there to refill the hand also. 
play. My only hope is. I mean, my only hope is Kaya's Wrath, so we're just gonna make the block that saves the most life. Try to do try to draw Kaya's Wrath. Nope. Yeah, Venerate Lux done real good. So this is why I need all this removal for Innkeeper. Innkeeper just gets to draw all these cards. Hey, Storm. I'm the ghost of the Meta's past. No, I think I think two rats is enough. It's not. I think that's that's enough. I don't think we necessarily need more. I think that's good. Oh. Well, I don't I don't know what you want me to do about that fire. I don't know what to do about that. So I got Legion Zen this time. Definitely a critical one. Way is just playing innkeeper and not drawing a card, right? I guess it has the card to save innkeeper. Hmm. Chose not to save innkeeper. So just two mana with that Luxodon. Can't play Luxodon this turn unless unless drawing a land. So that's good for me. Yeah, that was a great Legion's end for us. Yuck. I mean, I guess making this block is good against Luxodon. Out oh, of the Fen Lurker, I can flicker. Definitely want to get rid of two cards. The Selesny Adventures deck is definitely a critical mass deck. You know, like they're trying to get as many permanents out here as possible with. You know, March of the Multitudes, Venerate, Luxodon, all that kind of stuff. So every card that you get rid of with these discard cards is really valuable. Because it makes, it makes their other cards worse.
So Innkeeper can definitely pull ahead, though. Like, that's that's the card that, you know, uh, is counters my strategy of reducing resources because it increases resources. Yeah, a couple of mana away from Dreadhorde, though. There's not really too much stuff in graveyards right now. go. There we go. Good. Third innkeeper dead. Yeah, here comes the fourth innkeeper. Yeah, the one mana one one bigger threat than three mana five five. Uh, it's crazy innkeepers one mana. It's so good. Like, let's take Risen Reef. Let's we'll bump down the power a little bit on Risen Reef, so it's just draw. Even if you get lands, you don't get to put them into play. But then we'll cut it down to one mana. beasts so there's just one beast one innkeeper over there now and just a rat over here so the dread horde's not that spectacular <clears throat> no hawkeye has not made a witch's hat appearance yet Kaya's Wrath would be really nice first. You know, be able to Kaya's Wrath and then Command the Dread Horde, that would be really nice. <laughs> yeah, where's that value? It's pretty sweet. Gross. Nope, oh, another land. Yeah, I mean, I think I put in some Kaya's Wraths. I think.
<sighs> All right, so Fenlurker can block as a 3 3. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. That's a lot of damage. Eleven. Yeah, maybe I should have got the Fen Lurker also, because I have all this mana. Oh. Well, I didn't do that very well. Hmm. Well, darn. Went down too low. Probably shouldn't have grabbed Luxodon. Maybe I just grabbed Fenlurker instead of Luxodon there. Luxodon was too much life, I think. Yeah. Yep, yeah, we lost. Guess I should not have grabbed Luxodon. It would have been nice, you know, if, I, if we would have drawn a spell in like our last three turns to help us out, but we didn't quite get there. Feel pretty good about that matchup, though. Yeah, the Bell Hunt. I, I exiled the Bell Hunt on my end step. Should have just done it right away. I should have attacked and then and then played Command the Dread Horde. So I messed up there. I should have attacked first and then played Command the Dread Horde. Um, let's see what we've we been. We've been an hour forty for this deck. Let's play. Let's play one more. Um, and then, uh, but yeah, so it, it exiled. It was going to come back at my opponent's end step there. Uh, we ranked at like r around 250 or so.
Yeah, so we were in the top 1,200. We were like around 250. What's up, good brother? Happy Halloween. This is a tough hand. A yard can just be so good. Hey, Roger from Oklahoma. Happy Halloween. Against Temple of Mystery. Hey, track team. I kind of wish I would have had, would have a Yara instead of this Fenlurker right about now. Let's sh shuffle up that Yara that we know is down at the bottom. The Fenlurker can do some, some good stuff. Um, you know, it's, it's a cheap creature to play like with Oketra. Yes, yeah, Lesnia Titans deck from a while back. Yeah, that deck was sweet. Does still, I I think that that deck would be pretty difficult to play in in this Oko meta game, Oko meta game right now. Women's Fitness, Happy Halloween! I hope your goodie bag is filled with Okos and wreaths. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you very much, there. All right, so I don't have don't have Charming Prince right now. Hey, that's our tenth sub of the day too. So yeah, we're playing against a mass manipulation deck. That's pretty good for me, honestly. Um, I think we just do this right away. And I guess I'm going to just sacrifice the Midnight Reaper so that if Cavalier of Night dies, I have something in the graveyard. Charming Prince is so good against mass manipulation and Agent of Treachery, so. Overall, I don't mind playing against a manipulation deck. So I want to play fen double Fenlurker. It gets rid of two cards, so then my opponent only has one more card. But it's better to play Oketra first, so that's like the... That's the... Problem here. Yeah, the season ended today. It just, it just reset today, with it, being the 30 for, with it being the last day of the month. Okay, well, they just had two lands in hand, so... The double fen lurker didn't help out too much. I think what my opponent's playing here is basically what's going to start dominating if Oko gets banned. 
just Risen Reef, big mana. I think that's what happens with no. With no Oko. Come on. I think that this this rain and these storms and stuff has hurt my internet today because it's it's definitely been worse today than what it usually is. All right, Charming Prince is perfect. But again, I kind of want to play Oketra first. I think I can play Oketra first. Because there's three manipulations in the graveyard over there. So I'm hoping there's not a fourth manipulation. Not exactly sure how I'm winning this right now. That's like a Yara. I'm trying to go wide with Oketra. All that kind of stuff. I think I want to save this other prince. No, let's let's play it. Actually, this will work. I did not stack that perfectly. I need the other. <laughs> I wanted the Cavalier of Night to enter. All right, we'll sack you. Kill that thing. Oh, okay. That's not bad. It's not bad.
I didn't. I don't really have good attacks. Like these things are summoning sick. Uh, Cavalier thorns. I can't really kill Cavalier thorns because they get mass manipulation back. So many cards. Yeah, yeah, I can stack the triggers. I guess I had them stacked the wrong way. Liliana's pretty good. So now there's three Risen Reefs in there that I can grab with Command the Dread Horde. I can grab all three of those and get nine triggers. <laughs> this deck is so cool, right? Looks like they have the fourth they have the fourth manipulation. It's gross. Mass manipulation is a broken card. <laughs> I abhor my need for blood. Okay, so I'm at twenty one. So three, six, nine. 10, 11, 11 plus 4 is 15, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, Sure, it doesn't really matter.
Oh my gosh, you have to click done for every single one of these. Just put stuff out there. Yeah, click spacebar also. How are we doing on time? We're down to 21 minutes. They don't have any artifacts or enchantments over here, right? No. Cavalier of Night can get back Gilded Goose. Oh, they have Midnight Reaper. Kind of forgot about that Midnight Reaper. I was wondering what that attack was all about. Midnight Reaper. I mean, I'm never killing this Cavalier of Thorns. My opponent has to kill the Cavalier of Thorns. I'm never killing it. It's their only way to get a manipulation back. Did I block with something that has lifelink? I don't know how I gained life. That was theirs. You guys have lifelink? Huh. I don't know how I gain life. All right, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, I went to five with Dr yeah, Dread Horde coming back into play. Finish it. Makes sense. I require your body, not your soul. Give me that back. Is this just resulting in me 
milling out. Can I do a million damage or whatever I have to do? With all these food tokens every turn. Yeah, I guess Liliana ult. So if my opponent plays another Cavalier of Thorns, I was keeping the Murderous Rider to be able to deal with that. Okay, well now that's that means they're a lot closer to milling out now. Hope there's no Tamio or Jace over there. Oh my gosh. Arena. Why is my internet being so bad today? Stupid storm. <laughs> not not you storm in there. Not the Sure, just keep that there. I'm at 17 minutes. Hey, very poor little European man. Thanks for the sub. I appreciate that. Uh, yes, Elton. The up our opponents, Stanislav Sipka. Great magic player. Um. The problem with playing Liliana is I don't want to draw cards whenever my stuff dies. Maybe I shouldn't be that worried about drawing cards. The weak beat the strong. It's the only way that I can lose this is milling out. It's my assumption. I don't think they can get another mass manipulation. I mean, there's they're all in the graveyard. Like they have to have Tamio. So yeah, like Tamio getting one of those manipulations back, or Jace, so they don't mill out. I could, yeah, I could try to cycle my own riders and kill the riders and put them down to the bottom. So 
So I don't really want to use Murderous Rider on that crisis. Like, I want to save a Murderous Rider for a potential Planeswalker. Tamiyo. Jace. For how aggressively they're milling, I feel like they have a Jace. Really don't want to use this murderous rider on this Krasis, but the Krasis is going to kill the Soren. I do hope you make this battle exciting for me. This looks like a fun new toy. I can't minus Liliana because then they get to just kill their Cavalier and put. Manipulation back. That's going to kill me. So I got to hope all four of the manipulations are in the bottom 13, not in the top 10. Yeah, that was not the expected card at all.
Don't really have a good plan against mass manipulation, honestly. My deck's a very slow deck, and mass manipulation is very good against slow decks. Especially when there are four mass manipulations plus finale to reshuffle and get more manipulations. So I gotta be more aggressive. even lagging during sideboarding here. Uh, yeah, I would assume no Nissa in the deck, which I, I actually like that. I think that's a good move by Sifka not to have Nissa in the deck. Manipulation is is a card that's really really well positioned right now. That's why we saw the the blue white deck um, with uh, the blue white deck with all the steel effects do really good at the MCQ. If you just kind of look through like the Sultai list, like manipulation is, is certainly a card that they're weak to. I gotta win two more games, so do you need to play a little faster? It's definitely possible that, that they have a counter spell here with the Gilded Goose and the forest. That would be like the worst thing possible for me. Yay. That was a great turn. We haven't played the Rakdos Hacker yet. We're going down the list. You can tell with the, the records next to him.
I just played the the three three instead or the two three instead of instead of killing the goose. Fear the goose is probably chump blocking here. All right, it's good enough. It's a lot of life to lose, and so if I if I had like another creature to here, you know, I would I'd wanted to be able to play them. All right, let's see. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was definitely good to duress that manipulation for sure. We need to do that. All right, Bola Citadel won me a really quick game. Oh, I need to draw a white land, but once we draw a white land, then this hand's kind of turned on because we get to Charming Prince. And scry, and we're on the draw. Yeah, Oko can make yeah, can turn the citadel into an oak an elk. I was actually playing a very similar list to what Sifka's playing right now the other day. I was testing stuff out, just Simic Ramp. I was going two trait two agent of treachery, two manipulation though, instead of four manipulation. Um and then I had instead of finale for my spicy one, I had a Teferi time twist. For a spicy one. Well, that hand's a lot better than mine. I guess Sis Sifka disconnected, I guess. There we go. Back in it. <laughs> the Citadel's pretty big to be turned into an elk. Can see maybe squeeze tree fort being elked but not a citadel <laughs> of course i do fiddle yeah this looks Don't think we'll be winning this one. So much card draw over there with Risen Reef that it's it's not even like we're making them discard anything. Yeah, 
Yeah, you should be able to just get the basic land card styles in the store, as far as I know. Alright, looking for something really impactful. You know, like a citadel. And just quasi duplicate the reef. Yo. I think this is over. I mean, this this is what if if just Oko is banned, I think this is what is going to start dominating standard. Again, you know, like how we were scared of Risen Reef and Cavaliers and everything before Oko. I think this is what you have to look forward to with a bunch of manipulations and Risen Reef triggers with no Oko. Brew, did you see yesterday on stream? Yesterday I, ma I made an Oko Killer deck. Check out the Demir Anti Green deck I played yesterday on YouTube. Yeah, I think I think Krasis could be a, a good a good card to have leave the format. That could be a good ban target. Yeah, the, the problem is, is like, Hushbringer is awesome, but the problem is with Hushbringer is like, the, the reason to, like, the reason to play white is, um, the reason to play white really is Charming Prince. Charming Prince is so good, and Hushbringer and Charming Prince just don't work together. There's not, there's not strong enough white cards to go along with Hushbringer. Which is the problem there. This is not a planar cleansing deck. Anyway, so there we go. So that's Orzhov value. Um, you know, lost a couple of close sets there to some really good players. No shame in those for the losses. Uh, the last, last two losses, both very good players and both really good matches you know like we played really long close matches there um <laughs> there's a reason to play white yeah i, I like you yeah, had charming prince and cavalier of dawn are like the main reasons to play white but soren's awesome oketra's awesome we saw this deck you know be able to play a really long game um risen reef's a tough one you know like this is kind of des designed more for the other green decks with trying to attack their resources with Burglar Rat, Fenlurker, Bell Haunt. I mean, just like with all the decks. Risen Reef, that's that's not a that's not as reliable of a strategy. Um Yeah, there we go. Fun deck to play if you like flickering your stuff, Soren minus, all that kind of stuff. I kinda wish we had more Yara. Kind of wish we had an, another Ayara in here, but uh, get more of those triggers for flickering stuff. Um, but there we go. That's Orzov value. All right. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, uh, please hit the like button over there. Leave a comment. Uh, I would appreciate both of those. Uh, but thank you so much for watching some Orzov value, and I'll see you for the next video.